Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 5, Lesson 8 on Systems of Equations. Now, you know, it makes sense to just jump right into this because you've never seen systems of equations before, right? You've seen equations with one variable that you solve. You've seen, a, you've seen equations with two variables like y and x that you graph, right, with coordinate pairs. But you've not yet seen what we call a system of equations. Systems are amazingly important, so let's jump right into it and first explain what a system of equations is. All right, it's pretty much this simple. A set of two lines or other curves, but in this course we're only going to talk about lines, a set of two lines is known as a system of equations. All right, to solve a system means to find all the points that are common to both lines. So whatever points lie on both lines at the same time, right, those are solutions to a system. So let's take a look at exercise one. Two lines are given by the equations y equals 5 times x minus 3 and y equals negative 2 times x plus 18. Show that the point 3 comma 12 is a solution to this system of equations. All right, great. So again, this point will be a solution to this system if it both lies on this line and it lies on that line. Now, how do we know whether or not a point lies on the equation of a line or not? Well, we know by whether or not that point makes the line or makes the equation true, right? So we say that a point is a solution to a line or an equation with two variables in it, just like we do with a with an equation with only one variable in it by substituting values in and just seeing whether the equation is true or not. So let's do it together for y equals 5x minus 3 and then we'll have you work on it for the other one as well. So we kind of know, we're told that it's a solution, but we want to show that it is, all right? So for this equation, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point, I'm going to put 3 in for x, put 12 in for y, all right? So we just want to make sure that this equation is true. So I get 12 equals 15 minus 3 and 12 equals 12. All right. So wh what does that really show me? What that shows me is that if I plotted this line, it would pass through the point 3 comma 12. Let me just get rid of all that scribble so you can see it a little bit better. All right. We need to also show that this point lies on this equation. So pause the video now and do exactly what I did, but maybe put it over here and show that this point is also lying on that line. Of course, I gave you the harder one because the one that you have involves a little bit of negative work, but that's, that's okay. You know, this is, this is NGen Math 8. This isn't NGen Math 6 or anything, right? We know how to deal with negative numbers. So here we go. I'm going to put the 12 in for y, I'm going to put the 3 in for x. The only thing I really have to be careful about here is that I have a negative 2 times a positive 3, so that's going to be negative 6. And then negative 6 plus positive 18 is 12, so it also lies on that. And given that this point is a solution to both this line and this line, it is then a solution to the system. Okay, it lies on both lines. Now, here in exercise one, we have the point and we are just verifying it is a solution to the system. But more broadly, how can we actually find these points? Let's take a look at that in exercise number two. All right, here we go, exercise number two. Consider the system of equations shown below. Y equals one half X plus two and Y equals X minus one. Graph and label both lines on the grid provided. All right. Well, you've gotten a lot of practice in the last few lessons on graphing equations of lines. So I'd like you to pause the video now and take however long it takes to graph both this line and this line on this grid, plus label them with their equations. Take a few minutes to do that. All right, well this one should be pretty easy, right? Because its slope is obvious, right? It's one half. Its y-intercept is pretty obvious, even though I can't write the letter B very well, it's two. So let's begin at that point of two on the y-axis. Let's go two units to the right and one unit up in order to find our 
additional points that we can use. We could also go two to the left and one down. That's helpful. Let's get our line drawn now. Blessed silence. There we go. Let's move that out of the way. Maybe make my ruler a little bit shorter. All right, and let's label it. That's y equals 1 half x plus 2. Now, the more difficult one, most likely, is my y equals x minus 1. Okay, and that's because the slope is not quite as obvious. And we've talked about lines like this before. Right, I could rewrite this as 1 times x minus 1. So my slope can be thought of as 1 over 1. My y-intercept can be thought of as negative 1. All right, so I'm going to go down here to negative 1. I'm going to go to the right 1 and up 1, right 1, up 1. Remember, that puts me through the, the sort of the corners along a diagonal path. So let's get that one graphed as well. get it too close to that other line and maybe throw its equation down here y equals x minus 1. It's very important whenever you graph two or more lines on a given grid that you label them with your equations so that you tell the person who's looking at your work that you know which one is which. That's why we always are insistent upon putting those labels on. Now let's talk about letter B. Circle the intersection point of the two lines and write its coordinates below. All right, so the intersection point, you're going to see this terminology a lot in math as you move forward, right? The intersection point is simply where two graphs touch each other. And there's only one point on this entire place where the graphs cross, and that's right there. Make sure to circle it, right? It's easy enough to figure out its coordinate points, right? It's six units to the left and five units up from the origin, so it's got coordinates of 6 comma 5. All right, simple enough. Now letter C, show that the point in B is a solution to both equations and therefore is a solution to the system of equations. All right, well let me get, let me get my ruler out of here. Um, hopefully get my ruler out of here. So what I want to do is what we did in the last exercise. I claim that this is the solution to the system. And therefore, when I plug this point into here, and when I plug it into here, right, it should check. Why don't you go ahead and do that now, just as we did in exercise one? All right, well, this is pretty easy in both cases, I think. You know, in this case, again, I'm going to put 5 in for y. I'm going to put 6 in for x, right? 1 half times 6 is 3. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that 3 plus 2 is, in fact, 5. So it definitely lies on that one. This one's even easier, right? Because here, I just put in 6 for x, right? I get 5 equals 6 minus 1. So 5 equals 5, and that also checks. So what conclusion do we make from this? Well, we can make the conclusion that to solve a system graphically, right, means to graph the two lines and simply find where they cross. All right, that's it. That's what it means to solve a system. Find out where two lines intersect. Where do they touch each other? All right, and it's a very, very important idea. Um, it's used a lot in both just like normal math and in applied math. The ability to take two equations, right, graph them, and then find the points that lie on both by seeing where they intersect, where they cross each other, is extremely important. Let's take a look at that again in exercise number three. Solve the system below graphically. Make sure to label both lines you draw and circle the intersection point. Then we'll go on and do some checking. All right, so do it. Solve the system graphically. You know, graph both this line and this line, label them with their equations, circle their intersection point, and then write down its coordinates. Then we'll go ahead and do the check together. Take some time to do this. All right, well, let's tackle both lines right away. All right, for our first line, we've got the slope is 3 halves, and the y-intercept is negative 8. So 
Way down here at negative eight, I'm now gonna go two units to the right and three units up, two units to the right, three units up, etc. cetera. Right, get myself a bunch of points. Uh, maybe shrink my ruler down a bit. Bring her out here. And let's graph that line. Make my ruler a bit bigger. Nothing like having a collapsible ruler. Let's bring that a little bit out. Y equals three halves X minus eight. Just barely fit that labeling on. All right, let's do the other one. This one's a little bit trickier because the slope is both a integer and negative. So I'm gonna pull my trick where I say the slope is negative two over one. My y-intercept is six. I'm gonna go up to six. I'm gonna go to the right one, down two, to the right one, down two, right? Oftentimes, while you're actually graphing out the points, you can even see the solution to your system, but you still wanna make sure that you graph both lines very carefully and completely to justify your work. All right, let me get rid of my ruler. Label my line, y equals negative two x plus six. Right, once I've got my two lines graphed, remember that's not my answer. My answer is very simple. It's the coordinates of that point, right? So my actual answer is four comma negative two. That is the solution to my system, the point where the two lines cross. Now, to check our answer, which is not always mandatory, but I like to do it right away here because it really reinforces this idea of a point being a solution to both an individual equation, this one, and this one, and being a solution to both equations and therefore being a solution to the system. So let's do the check. All right, maybe, uh, maybe we'll do the first one together, have you do the second one on your own, right? The first one involves that fraction, so we've got y equals three halves x minus eight. If I put negative two in for y, then if I put my four in for x, I've got to do a little fraction work, two goes into four two times. Right, then I get three times two, which is six. Right, six minus eight is negative two. So that point lies on the line. What I'd like you to do now is do exactly the same thing, but use this equation to check it, and then we verify that that is in fact our solution. Take a moment to do that. All right, let's do it. Let me kind of get this up out of the way. Do the second part of my check y equals negative 2x plus 6. I put negative 2 in for y, negative 2 times 4 plus 6. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8, and negative 8 plus positive 6 is negative 2. So you bet, right? Because the point satisfies or makes both equations true, it lies on both graphs, and therefore it is a solution to the system. This is not particularly a hard concept, right? This idea of, hey, graph this line, graph this line, find out where they cross, right? It's kind of nice. Let's do one more, okay? These are all pretty much the same. Let's take a look at exercise number four. Solve the system of equations below, y equals negative x minus four, and y equals four thirds times x plus three, and then we're gonna check our answer. How about this? Why don't you go through the entire thing, graph this line, graph this line, find their intersection point, circle it, write down the intersection point, because that's ultimately your answer, right? And then check it in both of these equations. Take some time to go ahead and do this. All right, well of the whole problem, this might be the hardest part, is graphing this line. Specifically because again, the slope is a little bit trickier to see on this. It's really negative one, right? We can put that negative one there. That's simple enough. Um, that means our slope is negative one over one and our y-intercept is negative four. All right, let me get that graphed. Here's my y-intercept of negative four. I'm gonna go to the right one and down one to generate all my points now. Um, I can also move in the other direction. I can't seem to get my points to draw a little bit bigger. There they are. Uh, I can also move to the left one and up etc. That should be enough. 
this a bit smaller. And oh no, all my points just moved. Why? Why? All right, let's try that again. I'm going to get this. I am. Just have some faith. Come on. Oh, a digital ruler. If only I could use a real ruler. Maybe I could use a real ruler. Now that I think about that, that's an interesting idea. All right, well, for now, I've got my nice digital ruler. There we go. And we've got y equals negative x minus 4. All right, the second line is pretty standard, right? We've got a positive y-intercept, a positive slope. Should be easy. We've got an m of 4 thirds, a b of 3. Simple enough. Let me go up to a y-intercept of 3. I'm going to go to the right 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4. I'm going to go down. Uh, I'm going to go to the left 3 and down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Left 3, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Let's get that one on here. And here we go. All right. Get that ruler out of the way. Y equals 4 thirds X plus 3. There's my intersection point. Now, as an aside, right? All the intersection points for systems that you're going to be solving will have integer coordinates, meaning whole number coordinates that could be, you know, positive or negative. If you graph your two lines and you find the intersection point isn't like that, then it likely means that you graphed one of your two lines incorrect, okay, or incorrectly. So be careful of that. But we've got our solution, right? It's at negative 3, negative 1, right, I think? Yeah, negative 3, negative 1. So let's get that down. A lot of negatives. And now let's check. Let's make sure it's right. All right. So we've got this equation, y equals negative x minus 4. So if I put negative 1 in for y, this is a little bit of a tricky check, actually. Right? So negative negative 3 is positive 3. And then positive 3 minus positive 4 is negative 1. All right? Likewise, we can check it in the equation y equals 4 thirds x plus 3. A little bit tricky here in terms of the fraction work. All right, and the reason for that, oops, I forgot to put the negative 1 in for a y. Let me get that in right away. All right, 3 goes into negative 3, negative 1 times. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And negative 4 plus positive 3 is negative 1. All right, so it checks on both of them. All right, let's wrap this up. So today, what we saw for the first time was what's known as a system of equations. Now, for us, we said, hey, a system is the equations is, is a collection of two lines, all right? You could have a system that had three lines, four lines, five lines. You know, as long as they all five of them or whatever intersected in a single point, that would be the solution to the system, all right? At, for us, the only systems that we're going to work with are two lines. That's it. You know, in future courses, you're not going to just have lines. You're going to have lines, parabolas, and all sorts of other types of curves. And just like here, we'll combine those into systems, and we will solve those systems by finding their intersection points. In the next lesson, we'll actually start to begin to find the intersection points using only algebra not the graphs themselves. And that will be the true power of algebra, is being able to tell us something about the graph without having, ever having to actually draw the graph. But we'll see that in the next lesson. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.